All right, you've made it to the last session of day one. Uh, this is Andy Harmon. I've been the uh, track host and will continue to do so tomorrow and Thursday as well for uh, cloud native development and application modernization track. Um, please don't stop asking questions. Um, throw your questions in the uh, in the chat and the Q and A, um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll keep things rolling with the last session of the day. Just a re quick reminder too: we'll have an office hours immediately following this session, uh, where the speakers from throughout the day will be available just to have uh, open conversations. If there's something that came up that you had a question of, um, weren't able to ask it on the session, um, feel free to to join that uh, that office hour. And, uh, to wrap this session. With that, let's keep things going. Um, we're going to hear from uh, Luis and and then a, a little cameo from myself as well. Um, and then we've got uh, a couple of folks on that will be uh, monitoring the the chat as well. Uh, David Salinas and Denise Basak, um, who are um, uh, product managers of the uh, of the stack that we'll be talking about. So with that, Luis, over to you to kick things off. Uh, well, thank you, Andy, and uh, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's session. I am uh, Luis Cascoarios, and I'm uh, responsible for product management for IBM Cloud Security Services. Uh, today, uh, obviously, I'm joined by Andy and David Salinas from the Westphere Automation Product Team, and uh, Damnit uh, Vasak, who covers data security on the IBM Cloud. Um, we, will take you, we will be taking you through an alternative approach that may help you accelerate your path our application modernization by leveraging uh, already available managed services on the IBM cloud, especially those around security and compliance, uh, uh, and complementing them with uh, the web C automation uh, solution sets for workloads uh, using Liberty, uh, especially running on OpenShift uh, on the OpenShift platform. Um, okay. Let me see if I can master this changing of slides. Um, okay, so uh, let me start by painting a picture uh, to put, uh, put this scenario uh, a little bit in context. Um, as, as you may already be painfully aware, everything has changed in the past two years. I mean, that's a pretty obvious statement, um, but our lives have changed in ways uh, that we, we really didn't expect, right? Since the start of COVID-19, how we interact with basic things like money, has changed uh, and the use of digital wallets has skyrocketed in popularity. Uh, a new survey from, from NASDAQ shows that 60% of people are comfortable with leaving their house without their wallets and only carrying their phones. In fact, 75% uh, of the respondents in the survey said that they had used a mobile wallet in the past year. So, you know, you would say, you know, why, why does this matter to this, right? So, because it really represents how fundamentally our relationship with connected technology and the digital economy has changed. Uh, organizations today are facing a choice between, you know, taking advantage of cloud and connected data to lead the way in the markets and create new experiences for their users or be left behind with traditional approaches to IT deployment. So the pandemic, only accelerated what we are already seeing, that companies of all sizes and all types are moving quickly to modernize internal and external systems for efficiency and improve services. Uh, and they're turning to cloud to accelerate that journey even more. So the same as with the digital wallets example, uh, organizations are uh, recognizing the value of cloud-based deployments and losing the fears or concerns they had in the past uh, regarding losing control or security over uh, parts of their implementation. Uh, the example that you see here with uh, Banco Bradesco, it's, a, it's really a great one. Uh, in Brazil, um, the idea of a formal bank account uh, is not very common, right? Uh, but being part of the economy is really essential for everyday living. So we, uh, we help Bradesco create a digital cloud-based solution to bridge the gap and address real challenges for this business and their customers. The key to this solution was not only the facilitation of infrastructure as a service and platform as a service uh, uh, um, solutions to develop and deploy their modernized application, but also the addition of security and compliance assurances and services that came with that move. Okay.
Okay, in a few short years, um, you know, leading companies will generate their revenue from sources that don't exist today. Uh, those services are digital in nature and the digital economy is growing aggressively based on cloud as the connection point to link the most important work in every organization. So cloud is the connection point, growing 21% year over year into 2026. Uh, and this work, this change is happening today. 40% of financial institutions are already uh, using high performance computing for uh, artificial intelligence workloads for things like language processing and other automated tasks. Uh, these are types of tasks that can improve the way customer services is handled and how insights are generated from call logs and how new services are designed using digital services. Uh, while convenience is key for customers and, and markets driving these demands, the same enterprises must put the security of data above all else, protecting it from bad actors uh, and third or fourth party uh, uh, risk um, that they usually have in their operations. Uh, for highly regulated, regulated industries, those that are charged with safeguarding the most sensitive data, um, there are lots on the line. Uh, businesses need a different kind of cloud to unify their workloads and data while mitigating risk at the same time. Um, hybrid cloud and AI are the, mo the two most transformative enterprise technologies out of our time. Uh, they're designed to help enterprises securely uh, digitally transform. And hybrid cloud enables our clients to host workloads wherever they need without you know, locking them out of innovation while delivering uh, the seamless experiences cost their customers are demanding. Those organizations that can successfully pair technology leadership with business strategy will be the ones that define the future for their industry, for the market and the enterprises, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, and the experiences uh, uh, their customers have. Uh, this requiring connecting every part of the business all your data and your workloads securely into the cloud and throughout the whole hybrid IT operation. Okay. This is so this is so important. Yet um, this work can can be incredibly difficult to implement, especially for established organizations and those in any kind of regulated space. Uh, take this example from, from banking, uh, where many of our clients are now moving higher value mission critical workloads to the cloud. But this is a slow process. Both Accenture and Boston Consulting Group found that in the financial services industry, most systems of record, such as core computing and mission critical workloads, remain on premises. Why is this the case? Well, uh, this is a, this is complex work. It requires deep understanding of the existing operations and where the businesses want to go. Plus, the regulatory and uh, and security issues inherent to these types of industries are the uh, and the complexity of moving to the cloud are dictating that you know this is the case. <clears throat> It's all about understanding the uniqueness of your business processes and applications as an organization to develop uh, a workload placement strategy that and best understands which data should reside in which environment. The fact is that different workloads have different needs to operate efficiently. Uh, this is also this also means that that you cannot have all your workloads in one place, whether it's on prem, in public, or private cloud, or at the edge. So the question becomes, how do you decide where to place your workloads? Uh, this, is the, this is where the IBM Cloud uh, uh, excels, being the center of that hybrid cloud environment to help modernize your approach to the most challenging workloads in the most regulated environments while offering you flexibility and agility to grow and, and innovate. So the question becomes, how do you decide where to place those workloads? Uh, this is where IBM is helping clients make the, the right workload placement decisions. And these decisions are based basically on five key dimensions. Uh, resilience, and this is what we heard from customers, right? Resiliency, security, compliance, performance, and cost. 
IBM has dedicated to delivering on, on these top parameters with IBM Cloud, particularly for clients in highly regulated industries so they can make decisions on their critical word logs in the meet and back office with confidence. Let's start first with uh, resiliency, right? Operational resiliency, uh, or, or you know, we can think about being able to operate throughout a, a disruption uh, is critical in heavy regulated industries. IBM Cloud is more resilient than general purpose cloud providers. Any downtime can be disastrous and operations must continuously uh, be up and running. Uh, or a steadfast focus on stability is really paying off. Uh, first of all, uh, true or architectural approach for stability with uh, IBM multi-zone regions uh, comprise each one of three data centers uh, uh, engineer for resiliency, limit the adverse effects of any failover to a single data center. We even have some cross data center, cross uh, multi-region uh, backups that can actually even mitigate that even further. IBM Cloud Satellite, for example, brings cloud services and workloads to run anywhere, either on-prem or even other uh, CSP infrastructure um, that you may have available with the same high availability profiles. And our SLAs uh, have set up a, 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 a level of 99.999% availability backed by the fact that we have been able to reduce uh, you know, uh, through our architecture, uh, 71 incidents by even 90%. Now, turning into uh, performance, um, the hybrid cloud offers the power of choice and performance. Uh, our platform-centric approach is open, secure, and flexible. Uh, uh, this enables clients to take a workload placement approach where clients can make their decision on which workloads they want to put where in a hybrid multi-cloud architecture, and also helps you know, reduce concentration risk or over-reliance uh, on a single cloud provider. IBM vision of hybrid cloud, which includes, you know, the IBM cloud itself, VMware, containers, uh, VPCs, uh, C systems or mainframes, uh, Power 10 capabilities, 886 servers, high performance computing, and even quantum computing. Uh, all of this is aligned with the needs for consistent performance as clients move between on-prem and the cloud, even for the most data-intensive workloads. Another important dimension, the total cost of ownership, uh, is it's really kind of um, uh, originated from our IBM cloud framework for financial services, which was built in collaboration with the top industry customer council and materially, materially reduces the uh, additive expense, complexity, and speed uh, by which a client can de derive value from its cloud. While other cloud service providers require clients to build and maintain custom controls, we basically have done the work for you. You know, from creating a, a vetted ecosystem of more than 130 fintechs and ISVs as part of our platform, all of them must be validated and demonstrate compliance to the control framework to engage in the financial institutions that we that we onboard, uh, thus eliminating a lot of the third and fourth risk uh, uh, costs that we mentioned before. Two, maintaining a set of native uh, services that automatically follow those best the same best practices, controls, and the ability to continuously check posture. Uh, by doing this, we eliminate the huge administration burden and materially reduce spend on developing and maintaining regulatory control, which actually brings me to the last and most important differentiating dimension and core topic of this presentation, which is security and compliance, the last two dimensions. While a hybrid cloud strategy is essential for enterprises, they must avoid uh, falling victim to what we call the Franken cloud. Uh, why? Because failure uh, to holistically manage hybrid multi-cloud environments can create blind spots that, that bad actors can attack. Uh, this is why data security and trust are at the center of everything we do. Uh, the world top banks, governments, telco, healthcare organizations have worked with us over decades to uh, ensure they keep uh, the trust of their clients. And our ongoing commitment to our clients is it's really paying off. IBM uh, was recently named the trusted leader by IDC compared to other uh, five other cloud providers. 
which I'm not going to name. Uh, and they, uh, they measured uh, four foundations of trust, privacy, security, compliance, and enterprise security governance. IBM was the overall leader and the highest scores when it came to privacy and compliance. So, and, and this has some history, right? In 2019, we took a strategic step uh, of addressing the needs of our clients in regulated industries, creating a new market category with the first industry-specific cloud for financial services. IBM Cloud for Financial Services was a significant pivot for uh, from general purpose clouds. It, it is designed uh, specifically for highly regulated workloads and by meeting the highest set of standards for financial services, it can also be leveraged across other industries like government, healthcare, airlines, et cetera. As a certified hyperscaler, the IBM Cloud uh, platform differs from others um, in, in a clear way. We are mitigating risk uh, with the highest set of regulatory and compliance standards by industry. Uh, this, is, this enables us to help clients transform businesses in the mid and back office uh, that cannot be fulfilled by a general purpose cloud. Um, by comparison, other clouds uh, have been successful in transforming front office apps alone, right? So how are we meeting the, the regulatory expectations and compliance requirements? Um, well, the IBM Cloud for Financial Services include policy as code, uh, using built-in security and compliance controls that, uh, and it is setting a new standard for a compliance conscious industry. We are delivering a cloud to serve the challenging needs of regulated industries uh, that has the laws, rules, and regulations built in from the onset. So, you know, this is what we call policy as code, uh, uh, which means regulated companies can innovate at the pace of the most agile startup while being knowingly in control of all their, you know, their data and, uh, and resources. Um, so we didn't build these controls in a vacuum. Uh, these are industry informed controls established in, in collaboration with uh, the IBM Financial Services Cloud Council. This council brings the collective intelligence of more than 130 CIOs, CTOs, CISOs and risk experts from the financial institutions around the world. Uh, I can name a few like, you know, Bank of America, BNP, Banco Sabadell, Banco Bradesco, we just talk kind of uh, an example on. Uh, so security is central to the design of the IBM Cloud. Uh, we have unique capabilities uh, making the IBM Cloud the most secure uh, cloud for business, uh, with some of the key highlights, for example, IBM leading uh, encryption and confidential computing capabilities, which enable uh, our clients to keep complete control over their data in the cloud. Uh, our clients' data is theirs and theirs alone. Not even IBM can access it. Uh, and we also have ways of uh, uh, of connecting uh, to, uh, to, for example, managing encryption keys across multiple cloud environments with our uh, IBM Unified Key Orchestrator. Um, the IBM Cloud Cyber uh, Recovery capability helps enterprises protect valuable data from modern threats uh, through backup and disaster recovery and cyber recovery. And last, uh, the IBM Cloud Security and Compliance Center to centrally manage risk and regulatory compliance requirements that we talked about for, uh, for all our clients in regulated industries while demonstrating compliance uh, and, uh, you know, is a timely and, and costly requirement which is a timely and costly requirement. So <clears throat> we enable clients to continuously manage security and compliance and actively protect workloads from their vulnerabilities and threats. So, okay, so we're gonna get to the, uh, wait a second, okay. Uh, just to give you an example uh, or an idea of what the burden, uh, the security and compliance process is for enterprises, we can see here uh, the, in, the impact it has uh, for a typical large financial institution that has to care for the technology implementation on-prem, uh, applying the right security controls, abiding by internal controls frameworks, and then proving adherence to industry regulations, not only uh, for their implementations, but for also all their third-party supplier solutions. Well. The thing is that it takes them 18 to 24 months for one round of checking. Uh, this is why now that modernization efforts are at play, 
there is a need to look for a release valve to ease this huge cost of deploying business applications. Which brings me to if I can pass it. Uh, I'm having trouble going to the next slide. Can somebody push the next slide? Oh, there you go. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so the IBM Cloud approach to facilitating uh, workload onboarding and modernized application development and deployment is to provide a security and compliance framework that, that would help organizations consistently define, implement, and assess controls across hybrid cloud, which removes that huge burden we just mentioned as the organization leverages the business advantages of deploying on cloud which are scalability, elasticity, price performance, you know, skills focused and, uh, and infrastructure administration burden relief. So we start, we start this framework by, you know, defining, you know, with defining controls. You can think this uh, of this stage as, you know, uh, setting policy as code. Uh, the deployment team can plan the implementation according to their established controls, uh, based on risk and regulatory requirements by means of using predefined profiles and deployable architectures that can be based on best practice guidelines or custom to uh, to their environment. Uh, this stage is mainly driven by security and compliance uh, center services. The next stage is implementing implementing controls and you can think of this stage as infrastructure as code. IBM Cloud provides out-of-the-box managed built-in security managed services, either through or infrastructure as a service or platform as a service, uh, that are already vetted against industry standards and provide controls consistent consistently across hybrid cloud. Um, they are set to deliver controls for, for what we would call the zero trust implementations. Uh, these security services controls uh, can be set in the defined stage as part of the policy profiles that once defined can be fed into automated provisioning tools like you know, Terraform or Dex DexSevOps tool chains uh, to ensure the implementation is, is, is going according to plan. Uh, the built-in security services span the whole range of security areas uh, across network security, identity and access management, application and endpoint security, data security and privacy, and last, logging and monitoring. Uh, under the network security, uh, we offer uh, segmentation services with uh, pre uh, virtual pre uh, private cloud uh, next-gen networking, which is can be controlled by security groups, uh, and additional granular network access controls like uh, virtual private endpoints and context-based restrictions. Um, uh, which are context-based policies, right? Uh, all they team, uh, the network uh, offering itself. Um, so no additional things to, to, to get there. Additionally, uh, organizations can apply network level threat detection with our cloud internet uh, services uh, that provide uh, WAF and uh, DDoS protection. From the identity and access management perspective, we have the cloud IAM functionality that controls access and authentication for all of the services under the IBM cloud is already baked in with granular and flexible authentication instruments like uh, tokens, uh, trusted profiles, application keys, multi-factor authentication, uh, and granular access policies like role-based access, attribute-based access, uh, and context-based restrictions as we talked about. Uh, this helps centralize control over IEM for all of your accounts. Uh, now, if you're looking at then application development, AppID offers a library of authentication and authorization routines uh, supporting uh, federation, either through SAML, OID, uh, single sign-on, multi-factor authentication, social, social authentication, uh, uh, so the developers can concentrate on business logic for their applic mobile applications or applications on the cloud and not be experts in security. And we also have a secrets management service to help manage the lifestyle of lifestyle, uh, I'm sorry, life cycle of secrets uh, and uh, like credentials and certificates in a secure manner. Now going into application and endpoint security, uh, we offer uh, 
vulnerability management at the container or workload level with the vulnerability advisor, uh, OpenShift and Kubernetes security, and SysDig secure uh, capabilities. The SysDig secure uh, service can also be expanded to cover cloud workload protection and threat detection at the container level. <clears throat> the uh, the DevSecOps tool chain with continuous delivery uh, also offers a static application scanning uh, with the risk analyzer function. Uh, and then if you uh, want to expand into, you know, uh, the compliance of the endpoint, we have integration with Tanium uh, that uh, that checks that end, end, uh, endpoint compliance and sends results into security and compliance center. Now, the next step is data security uh, controls. And data security is key to our differentiating controls uh, with ability to do uh, enclave protection, confidential computing uh, with uh, the HyperProtect virtual service, which actually run an enclave for Linux One implementations. Uh, we also offer different levels of key management depending on data sensitivity. For example, key protect for multi, uh, multi-tenant multi bring your own key service. Uh, key protect on satellite, which then uh, offers the same functionality in a single tenant view uh, on, uh, with bring your own HSM on the location of the satellite deployment. Um, then they have it. Then we have the HyperProtect crypto services, which are single tenant. Uh, keep your own key, which means that you know the KMS is protected with confidential computing, um, which also includes an add-on uh, that we mentioned before, which is uh, a secure hybrid multi-cloud key management system. Uh, and the new addition to the uh, to this to the data security portfolio is the uh, data security broker, which is an application field level encryption, masking, and the identification gateway that can unintrusively be applied to applications without any code changes. Um, and then lastly, the controls on logging and monitoring. Uh, the IBM Cloud has a common audit logging function uh, used by all services called Activity Tracker. Uh, the configuration and status of all the services is also tracked by the security and compliance center uh, not only uh, on the IBM cloud, but also across other clouds. And the same thing, uh, the same posture management can be done uh, with the C-Security Compliance Center uh, on the C-workloads. So finally, as soon as these controls are, are deployed, hopefully automatically, and we, we enter uh, uh, on the operational stage and we need a way to deal with changes and continuously assess against our policy. You can think of this one uh, more as compliance as code, right? Again, this is where Security and Compliance Center gives you continuous visibility into uh, the security and compliance posture, alerts, uh, gives you alerts on gaps uh, to the policy goals, uh, tracks remediation, and then automates the reporting uh, for compliant audits. Okay, so, um, so all of these uh, all of these uh, uh, controls and services get complemented also with the uh, WebSphere automation security for your liberator based applications. And Andy can give you a little bit of a, a, an expansion on 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 how this uh, uh, um, solution actually uh, works. Yeah, thanks, Luis. So we we thought it'd be important to kind of uh, you know tie this into uh, most of the folks that are uh, it, you know listening in on this track are most likely WebSphere customers. Um, so when it comes to securing the actual application server, um, whether that be traditional WebSphere or or Liberty, and whether that's running on premise or in IBM Cloud or or you know in any other location, um, you know we we've we've also seen that same. Uh, you know, shift that, that Luis was referring to earlier over the last couple of years of, um, you know, the the propensity or the explosion of uh, vulnerabilities that are identified on a on a regular basis. So just as an example, if you tuned in for um, Ian and Shane's uh, presentation earlier today, you heard, you know, there was roughly 22 new uh, critical vulnerabilities um, that, that are exposed every day. Um, and so, you know, we introduced WebSphere Automation uh, back in early 21 um, to, to directly combat that, that uh, issue. Um, CVEs, which are common vulnerabilities and exposures, 
are are uh, you know I, identified and collected by CVE.org um, to you know just educate uh, the uh, the community of potential uh, exposures uh, you know on the Java platform. We take those and we publish those into security bulletins, which then t correlate those uh, exposures with the versions of WebSphere that we're running across the, across your organization. There's going to be a much deeper dive into WebSphere automation, so I won't get into a lot of detail here, but uh, um, we've got a slide later on that'll show that session, um, which will actually happen tomorrow. Uh, but just at a high level, uh, you know, the this product actually replaces a lot of those manual efforts that you know go through reading through the bulletins, correlating them to your inventory, um, and and then taking the next step to you know remediate that uh, that exposure, and and also tracking that so that you've got that you know complete auditability capability with uh, with many of the security teams that that we have now putting uh, in place you know reporting requirements based on those exposures. Again, I'm not going to get into the the low level of details. Um, there's actually a whole other use case for for web server automation that isn't relevant here, so I won't cover that now. Uh, but but we'll uh, we'll swing back to that tomorrow. Luis, let me hand it back over to you to to keep going on on our uh, cloud security. Okay, th thanks, Sandy. Um, okay, so the following use case will illustrate how application deployment teams can use the flexibility in liberty to further accelerate modernization efforts and lower costs and better uh, and better security uh, with IBM cloud and uh, web sphere automation security um, the business challenge is, is that Liberty offers a great application modernization platform but the organization will not get the full cost benefits if it continues to run on-prem uh, and require traditional security and compliance processes. <coughs> Excuse me. So the solution is twofold, right? First, leverage that flexibility uh, of Liberty and Westphere automation that already run <clears throat> on OpenShift to offload into an, an, an infrastructure that's managed service, right? An OCP or OpenShift as a service uh, infrastructure that is uh, available in IBM Cloud. It's called ROX or Red Red uh, Hat OpenShift uh, uh, Kubernetes Service, uh, and it's native uh, and can be run natively on the IBM Cloud itself, or even on a satellite distributed cloud implementation. This way, all the infrastructure is managed and secured by IBM Cloud Services, and removes this burden and cause from the application de uh, deployment team. Uh, ROX is, a, is already protected by many IBM cloud security services, uh, SEC for, uh, I'm sorry, Security and Compliance Center for, uh, for Security Posture Management uh, and Workload Protection, uh, Container uh, Vulnerability and Threat Detection. Uh, uh, key Protect, for example, for disk encryption with Bring Your Own Key. Uh, and uh, you can also apply Secrets Manager to manage certificate lifecycle for the uh, the ROX implementation. Uh, with uh, with the uh, Westphere um, automation uh, solution, uh, then you can complement you know all the vulnerability management at the application level, as as Andy uh, mentioned. Now you have uh, and now you have uh, security at different levels of the stack. The second Part of the solution is actually leveraging more of the IBM Cloud Platform as a service and uh, including the security services for running your Liberty application itself, offloading even more of these services uh, uh, and, and concentration more on the application business logic itself. Uh, for security services, you can use KP to manage your encryption keys, uh, the secrets manager uh, for application keys uh, or, cre or credential lifecycle management. And you can even introduce uh, app ID to offload all authentication and authorization routines. Um, but it doesn't have to be just uh, just the, you know, the security uh, services directly. For other, uh, you can also leverage some other uh, platform as a service services. Uh, um, for example, the Cloud Object Store service or the IBM Cloud Database as a service to manage the data at rest uh, from the application. And these services 
also are protected by the same IBM Cloud Security Services, giving you really a common security uh, control uh, and assessment for all your modernized application environments. <clears throat> so the ultimate outcome is that by deploying your modernized Liberty application on IBM Cloud, you can speed up deployment, reduce the administration costs and operational costs. Uh, and you know the more native services you use and consolidate uh, uh, and offload uh, security to under the best practices uh, security framework that helps you define, implement, and continuously assess your workload uh, security and compliance. Okay. All right. Okay, so just to recap, the, the fact that Liberty and, and Web3 Automation uh, already run on OCP gives you the opportunity to leverage the IBM Cloud, you know, um, uh, manage OCP service, uh, which greatly automates deployment for your modernized application and reduces platform management burden. No need to change what you already, you know, what you have already developed. Uh, you know, ROX uh, is managed on the back end by SREs, and the SLA re, uh, requires that it follows strict security and compliance controls itself, many of which are provided by the IBM Cloud security approach uh, for network security, identity and access management, workload protection, encryption, and monitoring. Um, the sample uh, uh, of, of the regulations and guidelines that are, support, um, uh, that are supported out of the box are listed right here. Um, and uh, you would not have to worry about them uh, for the platform itself. So a lot of that is doing the work out of the box for you, and you don't have to continuously, you know, uh, be concerned about uh, the status of that of that compliance. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So the security profile. Um, for your uh, Liberty modernized application would also uh, would, would also increase uh, since you would have not only the security to protect the rocks platform itself uh, which complements um, uh, the, the uh, vulnerability management and memory leak uh, analysis in uh, Westphi automation but you also are able to leverage the same IBM cloud security services for your application by using them directly or through other platform services like Cloud Object Store or uh, IBM Cloud Database as a Service. Luis, I think you've gone on mute. Uh, thank you. I don't know which where, where do you lose me, but I, I'm going to start here again. So I'm going to summarize. Uh, I'm going to give you a summary of the key IBM Cloud Security Services solution that uh, we good to consider first. Uh, the Security and Compliance Center is at the core of the IBM Cloud Security approach, and, and it's the main differentiator for the IBM Cloud as the most secure cloud. It ensures that your organization is operating according to the core values and best practices established uh, to optimize the value of data across the business without uh, the box uh, policy profiles, that's in the defined stage, for, um, for hybrid cloud implementations. <clears throat> that can be automatically deployed uh, in the implement stage with the rest of the security controls via the De DevOps uh, tool chains. As workloads move to the IBM Cloud, there is no way for a client to have insights into the configuration of the environments to ensure that things are remaining, you know, compliant with all the policies. So security and compliance center provides that control and visibility, enables continuous secure and compliance posture for the assess stage by monitoring uh, and, and comparing implementation and controls against the goals and, and uh, that you have established and suggesting remediation steps. And with satellite, uh, it expands this security and compliance management across enterprise uh, on-premise 
edge computing and uh, public cloud environments for any cloud vendor. So organizations then benefit from security and compliance center because as they deploy their modernized workloads on the IBM cloud and hybrid cloud, they get first a centralized unified experience to apply best practices controls out of the box, uh, a way to quickly check how the application uh, deploys against the defined security and compliance goals that can be reported for compliance audits, uh, reducing a lot of the cost of doing that uh, gathering of information and a managed way to apply preventive enforcement with IBM cloud services, including workload protection, um, and the ability to analyze risk for potential threats as you actually collect a lot of these, um, you know, activity information. <clears throat> and then lastly, you get a managed service that, uh, a managed service that offloads the burden of managing security and compliance across hybrid cloud deployments. Okay. The, okay. <clears throat> so customers, um, let's talk about a little bit about uh, 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 IBM Cloud Key Protect, right? Customers want to manage encryption keys in a way that they achieve full control over their data, uh, which is going to help them meet security and compliance base or basic encryption industry uh, requirements as they move their workloads into IBM Cloud data infrastructures like databases, storage, v VMs, containers, A apps, or cloud custom native apps. So, uh, I very you know customers are very particular about giving control and not being able to you know have somebody perusing over their data. So IBM Cloud Key Protect is a fully managed key management service uh, available as in, in two flavors, one it, as a multi-tenant service on IBM Cloud, and also as a single tenant service on IBM Cloud Satellite, and provides seamless and affordable onboarding of large sensitive workloads with central customer control over encryption, simplify visibility and governance of the encryption keys lifecycle, and operations to minimize administration costs. So, the key protect key management service basically offers uh, some key key functions, right? Centralized and automated control over the lifecycle and governance of customer keys for encryption. Uh, provides you with bring your own key uh, uh, approach option that uh, that uh, gives complete customer control over the encryption keys or the master encryption keys. Uh, State of the art uh, security protection for keys, including you know, highly secure FIPS 140-2 level three compliance HSM key store, a, a quantum safe crypto TLS import protocol and AES-256 encryption. Uh, it also has seamless, seamless integration with other IBM cloud services for databases, for storage, uh, VMs or VMware uh, containers and even uh, AI apps. Um, that integration is not only with the uh, users of encryption, but also has integration into the IBM Cloud Security Fabric for identity and access management, authentication uh, and authorizations, with activity tracker for audit logging, and obviously with security and compliance center for uh, risk and posture management. And it provides very flexible interfaces and open interfaces uh, for providing key management to custom cloud applications and application development environments. Uh, and like any other service, is it's going to be also pushed to actually have or be compliant with industry standards, as you see listed here, uh, SOC 2, PCI, HIPAA, ISO 27000, local regulations, all in all the IBM Cloud MCRs. Um, now going to Secrets Manager. Uh, organizations usually rely on, on a variety of secrets such as API keys, uh, user credentials, TLS certificates uh, to securely run their operations and applications. Any misstep in handling these secrets could compromise operations and expose data to vulnerabilities and security liability. So uh, as operations scale though, uh, especially uh, as more workloads move to the cloud, keeping track of all the secrets and maintaining or storing them securely becomes an overwhelming task that can be 
costly and, in, and most importantly, can introduce a lot of processing error risk. Uh, application development teams are looking um, um, that are looking to build cloud native workloads seamlessly without having to worry about mismanagement secrets and uh, that lead into breaches, right? So IBM Cloud Secrets Manager helps organizations manage API keys, arbitrary text, username and password combinations, TLS certificates, all from a single plane of glass. Um, so IT organizations can leverage the isolation provided by single tenant data plane with the scalability, ease of management and, eco and ecosystem interoperability provided by a managed uh, uh, security as a service. Uh, so Secrets Manager gives use users the end-to-end -end encryption required to make them comfortable migrating their secrets data to the cloud from encrypting all secrets data with their own root key, either using or connecting with uh, KeyProtect or HPCS, HyperProtect uh, crypto services, uh, to, to address an intrinsic protection out of the box. Uh, application uh, deployment managers can take advantage of the IBM Cloud Private Catalog for servicing, well, <clears throat> sorry, for service provisioning and tool chain uh, for DevOps pipelines deployments, amongst other services integrations, without having to leave their context by interfacing directly with Secrets Manager in the service. Uh, the security of the IBM Cloud um, uh, with the power of the vault at a fraction of the price of other vendors, such, uh, you know, such as HashiCorp, for example. So you get a lot uh, in this package uh, that is integrated into the whole fabric of how you're going to be doing uh, uh, your security in the IBM Cloud. So. Uh, to summarize, Secrets Manager offers differentiated value with, you know, a consolidated secrets management uh, where you can manage, you know, manage all kinds of secrets, as I mentioned, in a single plane of glass. Um, and a fully managed secret vault, you know, the, the developers can focus on building applications rather than handling routine tasks such as high availability, backups, logging, monitoring, you know, hardware setup and scaling, software patching, etc. The IBM fully managed single tenant secrets manager offers, uh, you know, um, ready uh, to use integrations with IBM identity and access management and IBM identity tracker as well, among other services out of the box. Uh, the high availability, which is one of our key uh, differentiators, is also comes out of the box, provides, you know, single endpoint for ease of use. Uh, but also, uh, but under the covers, the system is designed to be highly resilient and reliable. Uh, the standard configuration uh, is on the, you know, on the multi-region uh, uh, data centers, configured for high availability and 99.999% SLA. Um, and then we have a broad ecosystem of integrations as well. This IBM Cloud Security Manager allows you to seamlessly manage the secrets. Uh, in context from the IBM DevOps tool chains, the private catalogs, and other services. So there is contextual use of Secrets Manager in all of those services. Uh, and it, it provides you also that integration that I said with, uh, with bring your own key uh, uh, by leveraging Key Protect or HPCS. And lastly, we're going to go and talk about uh, App ID. Um, and app <clears throat> And App ID is good because application security can be in, incredibly complicated. Uh, uh, for most developer, it's one of the hardest parts of creating an app. And um, how can you be sure that you're protecting your information, right? By integrating with IBM Cloud App ID into your apps, you can uh, we can secure resources and add authentication even when you don't have much of security experience, right? With App ID, you can add a level of security to your apps by requiring users to sign in with the latest uh, in uh, authentication technology and authorization technology. Well, you can also uh, even use um, the server's SDK APIs to protect backend resources. So the main, the main thing with the IBM uh, Cloud App ID service is that it enables application developers to first, our authentications to the mobile and web apps uh, and protects APIs and backend uh, and backends running on the IBM cloud. Adds email, password, multi-factor authentication, base sign, uh, base sign up and sign, uh, sign in 
uh, with app IDs, scalable user registry, which is called the cloud directory, or with social login. Uh, for employee apps, for example, you can use SAML Federation for enterprise uh, directories uh, related sign-ins. And for all app users, you can enrich their profiles with additional information so you can build engaging experiences. Uh, for client SDKs, uh, uh, you know, you can actually also use uh, client SDKs for uh, a variety of mobile applications like iOS and uh, Android, uh, server SDKs for Node, IS, and Swift. And there's a REST API called uh, from any language um, to have a, custom a customizable sign-in widget uh, and app ID started apps. So all kinds of uh, toolkits for development here. Integrated uh, seamlessly with the IBM Cloud services, such as Identity and Access Management, Activity Tracker, SEC, and Encryption. You can start seeing a pattern here that everything is kind of connected. Uh, and uh, an open standards, um, uh, you know, are, are, are supported out of the box because that offers the best integration, right? So OAuth, OIDC, SIM, SAML interfaces, all supported out of the box. And then to satisfy regulations out of the box with a single set of, uh, uh, with a wide set of regulations supported, such as, you know, you can see right here in the list, GDPR, HIPAA, PCI, SOC2, et cetera, all of that out of the box. All right, so in conclusion, um, okay, good. So to summarize, uh, you have the opportunity to accelerate your limiter-based application modernization project by leveraging the IBM Cloud deployment model uh, and leverage the added benefit of enhanced security with WebSphere automation uh, and the IBM Cloud security services. So your application deployment team will benefit uh, from focusing on business logic, not be burdened by infrastructure and security management costs and complications. Uh, and, and this will get you out of the box value for, you know, a complete set of security uh, uh, coverage across infrastructure, platform, and applications. Uh, it will get you to offloading infrastructure, um, uh, platform, and security management to vetted and highly available set of managed services, uh, ensuring that um, the deployment continuously abides by your defined policies and regulations with automated audit reporting for streamlined compliance. And, uh, and then you can have also additional native cloud integrated services to, uh, to make uh, your modernized applications more agile. Uh, so the more you know, uh, uh, X as a service you leverage, the more cost savings you actually can uh, realize. So with that, uh, I'm going to pass it on to Andy to, to have some of the closing remarks and uh, and see if we have any questions uh, subsequently. Yeah, thanks, Louise. So I, just as a reminder, too, I, you know, I, I, I gave a, a brief uh, intro into uh, WebSphere automation. Uh, and if you want to hear more about, uh, you know, securing your or increasing your security posture, with, particularly with WebSphere, uh, join us tomorrow. It'll be the first session of the day tomorrow um, for our um, law security posture and automating operations. Uh, we'll do a deeper dive there. Um, I, I know you've seen this before if you've been in this track. Um, you know, we, we really, really appreciate your feedback. Um, and, and it, again, helps us shape our products. So, um, you know, snap, uh, snap the QR code with your, with your phone. Um, and, uh, and take five minutes, give us some, some uh, feedback on, on our products. And then uh, you know, we've, we've also got some good uh, events coming up. Um, we've got uh, in Atlanta uh, at the very beginning of April, um, the Dev Nexus. Uh, and then we've, we're also doing uh, kind of relaunching our, our technical conference in Vegas. Um, we, we do have Think coming up in uh, Orlando, but uh, the, the tech exchange in Vegas will be a deep dive technical um, conference. Please uh, uh, go out, sign up and, and join us at, uh, at one of our many locations that will be uh, um, doing some, some uh, getting back to doing some face to face stuff. So um, I, and, and then also, you know, please, uh, you know, feel free to, to join our community and, and, uh, provide feedback through that channel as well as, you know, get some updates from other customers as well as IBMers on, 
uh, you know, kind of what's happening around those, uh, the, you know, our product stack and, uh, and events that are coming up, et cetera. Um, so with that, um, wow, uh, we've, uh, we've wrapped up the first day of, of TechCon. Um, thank you so much for, for joining the, uh, uh, the, the cloud native development and application modernization track. Um, we've still got two days ahead of us, so another eight sessions um, for uh, for an action-packed Wednesday and Thursday. So uh, please join us again tomorrow, um, and and also immediately following this, um, we'll we'll open up office hours, um, which many of the speakers from today will be on and available to just have conversations. Please take a minute and um, click the link in your chat. Uh, to give us feedback on this particular session. Um, and all of these sessions will be available for uh, for replay. Uh, I believe they'll be up by the end of the day today, honestly. Uh, they're, they're supposed to be posted very quickly. So um, it's been a pleasure hosting the first day. Um, look forward to Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to open up the office hours and uh, um, hopefully, we'll just have some some candid conversation with many of our speakers from today. Thanks again for spending some time with us today.